we will use parametric derivatives to evaluate the conventional versus guerrilla army situation, just as we did when we were looking at two conventional armies at war. We are once again neglecting reinforcements. Find the derivative of the conventional army with respect to the guerrilla army. We simply divide these terms and get this differential equation. This is a separable. We'll bring the conventional terms to the left and the gorilla terms to the right. And now we will integrate both sides. This is constant. We are integrating with respect to G plus a constant of integration. We will multiply both sides by well, first, let's multiply both sides by negative one. These negative signs don't have to be here. And now we'll multiply both sides by two. That will not change our arbitrary constant of integration. And just like we did in the previous case with two conventional armies, we'll bring everything but the constant of integration to one side of the equality. And then capital C, capital G, these are both functions of time. This equality is true when t equals zero. So we plug this in. We'll write C of zero like that and g of zero like that. And that tells us what k is. So we have this left-hand side. equals this constant. And unlike um, the previous case, where we ended up with hyperbolas, what we have here are parabolas. We'll solve for G capital G, I mean. We'll start by getting these over on the left and moving this over here. And now we'll divide both sides by this constant. 
out. Here's G in terms of C and our various constants. And now we'll state which side is going to win this conflict. It's going to be the numerator of this fraction that determines that. I've graphed part of this equation. I've set this equal to this, and I've ignored this subtraction. Without the subtraction, we get a parabola with its vertex at the origin. As time passes, both C and G will decrease until they mutually annihilate each other. Let's now ask ourselves what this is doing to the parabola. It's a horizontal shift. And if we subtract a positive number, it's going to be a horizontal shift. To the left. So if this number we are subtracting, is positive, the graph will look something like this. And now the conventional army and the gorilla army both go down with time. But the gorilla army is wiped out here, whereas the conventional army still has soldiers. What makes this positive? Well, 2G is always positive. So this fraction is positive if and only if the numerator is positive. Conversely, suppose that this is negative, then this subtraction is really addition. And the horizontal shift is to the right. Now, both the C and G decrease. But when we come to this curve, the con this axis, sorry, the conventional army is wiped out while the gorilla army persists. Now, if we rewrite these a little by taking the negative terms over to the right, C times C zero squared is clearly some kind of measurement of how strong the conventional army is. I mean, C represents its training and equipment. C sub zero represents its um, its initial size. 
Likewise, G G zero is a measure of the strength of the gorilla army. But unlike the previous case, this is harder to interpret. When we had two conventional armies, we had this, we had terms that looked the same. I mean, what I mean by that, both sides had the square, neither side had a two. Here, these don't look similar, and it's a little harder to interpret. But this is a strength of the conventional army. This is a measure of strength of the gorilla army. So this equality makes this conclusion unsurprising. Likewise, it's hard to kind of interpret this inequality, but this is a measure of the conventional army's strength. This is a measure of the gorilla army's strength. So the statement that if the gorilla army is stronger than the conventional army, the gorilla army will win should hardly be surprising.